physical change. Um, matter undergoes changes. A physical change is going to alter the state or the appearance of the substance, but not actually change its composition. So the example we have here is boiling water. So if we were able to zoom in and look at what's going on in there, we'd have all these little water molecules, and they're touchingly close, and they're moving around. When we heat that sufficiently, it will boil and go into the gas state. And if we look at the particles in the gas state, it's the same particles. What's different is that they are now farther apart from each other. So there has been a change, but it's just a physical change. The molecules have not been changed at all. So in a physical change, the atoms or molecules do not change their identity. Any state change, going from liquid to solid, solid to gas, solid directly to gas, any of those combinations is always a physical change because it's just changing how the particles are interacting with each other. When we go from lecture to lab and start milling about, the individual people are the same, right? When you leave the class, you're the same. You don't, like, lose your head or have a leg fall off or something or grow an extra knows, right? You're, you're the same person. Um, it's just the interaction between the people is different. In a chemical change, the particles are changed. The substance is changed. So here we have the example of an iron nail rusting. In the iron nail, we have iron atoms arranged in a nice, strong lattice pattern. <coughs> and you can use this to, you know, you can pound it into wood and use it to build a fence. But when, when it undergoes a chemical change of rusting, it combines with oxygen, and now the oxygen is interspersed between the iron atoms. It's part of the substance now, and the properties of this are very different. Iron, the rust is, is sort of reddish, and it's flaky, and it's not very strong compared to the iron, original iron, which is shiny and strong. So the atoms are rearranged, and we get different substances in a chemical change. So here's an example of a physical change of dry ice subliming. So here's um, some dry ice. And in that, we have um, carbon, monoxide, carbon dioxide molecules in a solid form. Now, Carbon dioxide is kind of an odd compound. It doesn't melt under normal conditions. It goes straight to the gas phase. And that's why it's called dry ice, because it doesn't get the stuff in your cooler wet, because it never makes a liquid. It just goes directly into the gas state. And that change is called sublimation, going directly from a, a solid to a gas without melting at all. So we can look here at these illustrations. Are the individual particles changing? No, they're still carbon monoxide molecules. So this is a physical change. Here we have sugar dissolving in water. Sugar molecules are a bit more complicated than the ones we've been looking at. But here are the sugar molecules. And they're all arranged nicely together here in the, the sugar crystals. When we put this into water, and stir it up and dissolve it, these sugar molecules will separate from each other and mix and swim around in the water. Have the particles changed? No, they haven't. It is still sugar. It's a physical change. There is a change. It's dissolved in the water now. It's all mixed up with water. But it's still sugar molecules. Nothing happened to them. So when something is just dissolved, in water, it's also a physical change. Because we could let the water evaporate, and what would be left behind would be sugar. The crystalline, it might not be little tiny crystals like the granulated sugar that we poured in there. It might be larger crystals, but they are still crystals of sugar. So that's a physical change. Here we have propane gas burning, a little propane gas burner. Here are the propane, propane molecules, and those are going to combine with oxygen from the air 
and they're going to make carbon dioxide and water molecules. Have the particles changed? Yeah. So we, you know, if you imagine little Lego bricks, we took these apart and we combined them with the red ones from the air and we made new things. That's a chemical change. Not just that the particles separated or got mixed up with somebody else, but they actually came apart into individual atoms and were reformed into something else. So in a chemical change, the original substance is destroyed. We can also talk about properties, chemical properties and physical properties. So physical properties are those that a substance displays or that we can observe without destroying it, without changing its composition. So the smell of something, gasoline has an odor, right? You can smell the gasoline, that doesn't change the composition of the gasoline. That's a physical property. Odor, taste, color, appearance, melting point, boiling point, density, length, mass, those are all physical properties. When you observe them, you don't change the substance. A chemical property is really a chemical reaction, and to demonstrate the property, you have to destroy the substance. So gas is flammable. If you demonstrate that property or you observe the property that it burns, in that process, it's destroyed because a chemical reaction, a chemical change takes place. Other examples are um, corrosiveness, acidity, and toxicity. Okay, so here we're supposed to determine whether each change is physical or chemical, and then what kind of property is demonstrated in each case. So we take a copper wire and we hit it with a hammer until it becomes flat. That's a physical change. We have changed the appearance of the wire, but it's still just copper atoms, right? And so the property there is that copper wire can be hammered flat. Is that a physical property or a chemical property? Physical property. Because when you demonstrate it, the substance is, the individual particles are not changed. So that's physical for both. Someone yesterday asked, well, is it always the same that if it's a physical change, it's a physical property? And I can't think of a time when it isn't. I can't think of an example where you could have a physical property and a, a chemical change. So a nickel dissolves in acid to form a blue-green solution. That's chemical. That's a chemical change and a demonstration of a chemical property. So how do you identify that? Well, um, to form is a, is a good clue. Usually when we use to form, to produce, that implies that one thing is changing into something else, and that would be a chemical change. The nickel, and not by a piece of the element nickel, but an actual five cent piece, um, dissolving in acid. So dissolving makes us think, well, maybe it's like sugar dissolving. But do metals, does a metal nickel, I mean, if you stick it in water, does it dissolve? No, it just sits there and says, oh, here I am, a nickel sitting in a cup of water. Um, this is dissolving in acid. Um, and so this, this sort of one I would expect to be more challenging for you if it were on an exam. But the clue here of to form. And then we've got this blue-green solution. What's actually happening here is individual nickel atoms from the nickel are becoming nickel ions. They're losing some electrons in, in order to become part of this solution. Okay, dry ice sublimes without melting. Physical. So we just had a picture of that, and we said it was physical. Um, this word sublimes might be a new word for you today, but that is the, the physical change from 
solid to gas. Anytime the statement has a physical change in it, this thing melts, that thing boils, any physical change, I'm sorry, any physical, try that one more time, any change in physical state is a physical change, not a chemical change. It's also a description of a physical property. Okay, a match ignites when struck on a flint. That's chemical. So, how are you supposed to know that? Well, we've all struck matches, right? Some of us enjoy doing that, and other people are a little bit afraid of it, but I think we've all done it at least once. You light the match and it burns, and it's really cool, and then you have to blow it out or drop it before it burns your fingers, right? Could you do that again with the same match? No. The match is fundamentally changed by that, isn't it? It cannot be done over and over and over again. The match has been destroyed. New things have occurred. Anytime we have something burning um, or igniting, combusting, that's always going to be a chemical change, a chemical reaction. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Why can't they be both? Why can't they be both? That's an excellent question. Because of how they're defined. So a physical change is one in which the individual particles are not changed. A chemical change is one in which the individual particles do change. So you can't have both at the same time. Now, could you have physical processes and chemical processes changes happening together? You could, but they would be different changes happening at the same time. Any other questions? Mm 